Tony Rose is with us uh, today. Good morning. Hi. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? I'm excellent. I'm actually terrific. It's it's a very uh, exciting topic for myself. I was raised Catholic uh, and we were uh, cultivating these uh, traditions throughout the years and I'm proud of that actually. Yes. Uh, were you also uh, in a Catholic uh, uh, house raised in a Catholic background? I was. My family um, was Catholic and is Catholic and I went to a Catholic school too. So. Okay, so that's how it all started yep. for you. Yeah. What is. traditions do you remember from your childhood? Uh, we have lots of family traditions. I feel like um, the Catholic faith kind of brings a family aspect to everything. So we um, do Sunday dinners at grandma and grandpa's. We have mass, um, with the family and lots of different things. So, so yeah. family is a really huge thing in yes. a Catholics, uh, and we all, we treasure our family, our ancestors, our, you know, grandpa, grandparents, our parents, uh, what, uh, messages or what advices do you remember from from your parents grandparents um the messages probably is just to always pray and always keep the faith the rosary was a very big thing um for my family and it continues to be a big piece of our life so how do you remember those days how many were you of, of the children i'm the oldest of five children okay and uh, my grandparents, we all kind of lived together. So recently, as we got older, my two brothers have moved away, but the rest of the family has stayed pretty close, and they come home and we visit. So um, it's always just nice to have family around and to be together. So. Uh, and to have their support. Yes. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, tell me, um, when you first uh, started... Uh, is there is there a point uh, that we can call like uh, being uh, born again? There is this concept in church that we keep repeating, being born again. Is there ever in a point in your life that you felt like you, like you were born again? So um, when I was young, my dad passed away, um, and that was really hard, and it kind of made you question. God and your faith and why uh, he would do that and my uh, family just all kind of rallied around and we still say mass for dad and we still have things um, that we do special that are kind of church traditions too mm -hmm. um, based on that so I kind of we I was always raised in it I continued through Catholic school through eighth grade um, my mom taught at the Catholic school too so she was always an example for us. And then um, there was a point in my life after I had children then where we knew we wanted them to go to Catholic school because it instills so much in them and it gives them such a deep uh, knowledge of the faith. And my husband's actually a convert. Okay. So he um, came into it after we were married um, and so going through that with him was kind of a special time too. So then after we had children, um, we knew and God just kind of pushes you and he mm -hmm. kind of pushes your limits sometimes to help you deepen your faith. And so I feel like through a few years of um, teaching and God pushing me, I finally decided to listen. And that was kind of my journey to St. Patrick's too. Um, how old were you again when your father suddenly passed away? I was 11. You were 11. Yeah, and my yeah. youngest sister was 2. Okay. So it was a big a big time for our family. Yeah, it's oh, certainly yeah. very tragic. I can relate to that. I, I lost my mother when I was so like 13, 14. Yeah. yeah. Also very tragic death. Uh, when you are being tested like that, you said you were angry with God for a while. Yeah, it was um, it was hard. Being a, t being a teenager is kind of a trying time in your life, too. And then yeah. having events like that happen just kind of um, 
makes it harder. So without my family, I don't know that I would be where I am because they are so supportive. Um, Who took the role of the father? Um, My grandpa kind of and grandparents did. They living right next door. Um, They were there for everything. And we would, um, my sister, she would call sometimes if she was scared in the night or if we needed something and uh, grandma and grandpa, her grandma would come and she, we would pray together. Um, we actually stayed at grandma's for a little while afterwards um, just because it was a lot of work and very hard for my mom too. So yeah. um, she's always been a great testimony of the faith and just holding all that together too for the family. and I'm guessing your mother just kept working for to support family yes okay yep so we lived on a farm and she kept going with the farm and teaching um, she eventually had to leave the Catholic school system but she still teaches yeah. um, so she's teaching now in a public school and my sisters and I are all t- teachers or work in education wow. too so So that was your inspiration to become a teacher, too? Yes, and my dad was a teacher, too. Okay, so So. you have it in your genes. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, you do, you do. Um, Tell us, you were a teenager when you went through such a terrifying uh, terrifying time. Uh, How can we speak to teenagers today about uh, their so-called problems, quote-unquote, uh, if they really truly do have everything and they have their parents, they, everybody's healthy and yet uh, they're still experiencing, uh, many of them say, the worst time of my life yeah. and they don't even realize how much worse could it be uh, or what other people are going through and they're not complaining. Yeah. What, can, what can you say to them? Oof. Um. <laughs> Listen to your elders. They do have some wisdom um, and they have experience too. So going through that, um, we were we were always pushed to do better and to go to mass and sometimes it was hard, but mom would always put up that fight for church and for um, having that faith be part of our life and keeping up with the family. So Sunday dinners um, or time with family was always important. And going through a tragedy kind of makes you realize that a little more. Um, You don't want to have to go through a tragedy to realize that, though. So, yeah. yeah. Definitely. And uh, you reminded me of a wonderful one of uh, Fathers of America, Mark Twain, uh, who famously quoted... uh, uh, and when he was 15 years old, he thought uh, that his parents were in- ignorant and they knew nothing about life. And when he was 22, he said, I was amazed how much they've learned in just seven short years. <laughs> yeah. So it's a beautiful example of how we think uh, at a certain level of consciousness, we think that we know it all. Mm-hmm. And later in life, we really truly uh, regret it and say well my, my parents were right yeah. or i should have or i i should have gone this way or i shouldn't have you know done this or that and uh, we realized that uh the elder people just like you mentioned uh they're correct mm-hmm. and uh, so number one find someone who went through something like this or similar yeah it doesn't have to be uh, okay. If if you are so against religion, you don't have to be. You, know, you don't have to be finding a religious man or woman yeah. to follow, but find somebody who went through similar thing. So they've done it. They went through it, and they have the experience, right? Yeah. And then just ask them and be open and be teachable, right? Because you're from school, and I'm. I'm in my mid-30s and I'm still teachable because I know how much I do not know. Yes. Yeah. And we'll, we're never going to know everything, right? No. Right. So we have to be humbled by that and realize how much we really don't know. And 
if we are 11, 12, 15, 16, 18, doesn't matter if we are 70 or 80 years old, we're still not going to know it all. So we have to be humble by that and realize that there is just one person that knows everything and that's God. That's right. Um, the lives of the saints are very powerful. So if you are uh, a teenager or if you're in any point in your life, um, looking to the saints are very inspirational and a lot of them went through many hard things that um, you could relate to from addiction to loss yeah. to anything so and saints were no saints where they were alive yes. right and yeah. but they converted and they you know they turned their mess into message yes that was really important yeah. Yeah. Uh, we, we know about St. Augustine that he was one of the worst and now we have a beautiful uh, town in uh, North uh, Florida, San Augustine, one of the oldest, if not the oldest in America. Yeah. And named after him because he was a, a, a great turnout uh, in, in the history of, of our faith. Yeah. And there, there's many others. And just be curious, curious right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um be curious and continue to search out positive things too because that will have a big impact, impact. Yeah. yeah tell me a little bit about san patrick's per se i yeah. gotta personally say that okay uh our son is attending there and uh, we must admit that we're, we're moved from chicago we are new here but we uh previously we put our son in a polish preschool uh, it the cost was three times as much than sure. St. Patrick's School, and it was only three days a week. Here, Jacob has four days a week with full schedule and meals, and for a fraction of the price. And actually, you know, being uh, and associating uh, among other kids who are of similar, you know, like-minded spirit. So I think it is amazing and that's why we were uh, really happy to help you and uh, get you across the radio and to help you as much as possible. Tell us a little bit about the school. Why are you different from other schools? So St. Patrick's is kind of like a little uh, hidden gem and we want to get that message out. Um, we are pre-K through 8th grade school. Um, it's very close-knit, it's kind of like a family. Um, I've turned to them many times in just my few years of working there, and everybody is so helpful, so kind and understanding. Um, the kids, I think, pick up on that, and the people around St. Patrick's are role models for those kids, too. Um, we have a lot of fun in school. Uh, we just finished up Catholic Schools Week, and that is uh, full of activities and learning and growing in our faith, too. So having that faith aspect at school is really important, and it kind of helps to build that foundation for kids. Um, I think the middle school is very important, and yeah. those kids are at that age where um, they're starting to explore and question things, and you know, kind of that preteen age, um, but having the example and the foundation is something that they can always turn back to. And I know I did as a high schooler and college student too, that kind of went back to some of those things. And even now as an adult, I will think back to, oh, I learned that in Catholic school. Yeah. So I hope that that continues with our students too. So this is really about building that strong foundation for the kids. Yes. Yeah. Yep. And when you do have a strong foundation, no matter what the situation in your life, you will not tremble because you have a strong foundation, yeah. right? Yeah. That, that's what Jesus said, I'll build my church on the rock. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, we have about 130 kids, 126 right now. Um, so our class sizes are great for teachers and for close, um, small learning groups. Um, yeah, there's a lot of nice things that come with the Catholic school with environment. With the Catholic school, yeah, that's great. 
And but you do strive to become a high school too. Can we talk about your dreams? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there are dreams. Um, it used to be a high school, so it used to be Madonna High School. Okay. Um, and that was for about 20, 25 years. Um, it started, I believe, in the forties, and then in the sixties, it kind of. Um, I had gone away from that. So uh, I've heard that a lot, that people would like it to be a high school again, too. So okay. that is a dream of yeah, yeah, of the community. But first, too. we need to double the number of students, yeah. right? That would be nice. Yeah. That would be yeah. awesome. We have room for more. Yeah. So There is a potential. Yeah. 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 This building, it, once you get inside of the building, people are always amazed at how big it is. Um, the rooms are very nice sized. Uh, so, yeah. And I was also surprised when we first uh, walked in that you spent such a long time with us and uh, and you're the principal, you're supposed to be the busiest person, right? <laughs> and, and you had time for everybody and you had time for us. Uh, and that was so nice that, you know, in big cities like Chicago where we're from, it's it's just not like that. You you have open house and you can come for like 15 minutes, check it out, but here we can really discuss and talk and keep the conversation going and ask questions and yeah. well it's it's so different really yeah yeah it's nice um everybody works together there's a very big team aspect so that helps everybody's so nice in the yeah. school yeah. yeah 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 we love it about the school and let's let's come back to you personally because we started with you we're gonna finish up with you how <laughs> did you end up in this particular school so um, that's kind of my God story and my, my born again moment. Um, I was struggling uh, emotionally, mentally in the classroom and I just felt like I was missing something. Um, so I asked one day on my way to school at the end of the year, I had asked my son to pray the rosary with me and ask for some answers from God. And so when I walked into school that day, somebody, one of the, my teaching friends had said, there's an opportunity I think you should consider. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, okay. So I met with her after school. Um, she kind of told me about this and I said, I don't think I can do that. That's out of my league. I love being in the classroom. I love, you know, having the kids to work with one-on-one -on -one and... So you're already working stuff. in the other school. Yep. I okay. was working in a public school. Um, and so that weekend I was going to a walk to Mary. So up by Green Bay, um, they put on a 21-mile walk. Mm -hmm. And so I decided I would dedicate my walk um, with my brother. My brother and I went together um, to asking for answers and asking for guidance. So when we got to the end of the walk, um, the story in Champion, Wisconsin, uh, a nun was asked to do something courageous and to step out of her comfort zone and to educate the children over there. So I thought that was kind of my sign. Mm -hmm. And I went home that weekend with really sore legs. Mm -hmm. 21 miles was a long hike, yeah. um, but it was worth it. And I uh, applied for the job. And it was just like God took over from there and the ball's just been rolling since. And I have had to um, give a lot to him. So I, it just went so quickly and everybody has been so helpful. And my journey just has taken off from there. Mm -hmm. So my faith uh, through the Catholic school system, teachers, administrators have... Uh, faith development days throughout the year so they're really good at building the adults to be those role models for the kids hmm. um, so that has really led my faith journey and deepened my relationship with Christ and my knowledge uh, to a different level so that's kind of uh, where that has taken off uh, my husband has been super supportive and has been part of the plan all along so um, I think just listening to God's plan and making sure that 
we give him yeah. the control and try not to have too much ourselves. <laughs> yeah, we actually we had an interview yesterday with one of Polish uh, businessmen, we would say, but very deep in faith, and he said uh, basically the success in life um, doesn't have to do with struggle, but you do have to hard work. But when you put in the effort and you trust, somehow the door starts to open and everything so is happening as it's supposed to happen. Yeah. I believe I phrased it correctly. What does uh, happiness, what does success mean to you? Um, happiness and success in my life look like my family, I think. That's... I, I need them and uh, they're always there so through thick and thin and sometimes it's not always pretty yeah. um, but having family with you is my happiness and my success <laughs> yeah like uh, Rocky Balboa said the uh, world ain't no sunshine and rainbows <laughs> no uh, but with the family and you are a mother of four yeah yeah I have four boys and uh, it's it's exciting that uh, you know uh, you keep the tradition of family going because yeah. you are from a large family you do have a large family considerably right now people have one or two kids at the most yeah. and it it it's sometimes it is a riot in the house right it yeah. is <laughs> four boys can yeah. be wild yeah um, my oldest is seven and my youngest just turned one so we have a range of kiddos. Um, my grandparents babysit for us. Um, my husband has the ability to be home on Thursdays and Fridays, so he helps and takes care of them and does everything. Too. Okay, we say hello and big thank you to your parents, especially yeah. your grandparents, right? Yeah. Because they help a lot. Uh, let me ask you one more thing. What does faith mean to you? We hear a lot of uh, definitions. We hear a lot of definitions in the Bible. For example, here Bruce 11 1 points out that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Mm -hmm. What does faith mean to you personally? Uh, faith is believing in what we can't see and putting our trust in God. Um, and deepening that relationship so allowing our relationship to grow and trusting in God's promises why do you think a lot of people are right now uh, um, escaping church not attending mm. um, I think our world pushes for that and I think it's hard to push back against it um, and if you don't have those foundations and that understanding of what faith is in the church, um, then it's hard, it's easier to be pushed around. Mm 